Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 8, Distributed Database Management Systems DDBMS Part 2. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to Describe type of homogeneous and heterogeneous DDBMS and the multi-database system MDBS and explain functions and reference architecture of DDBMS, MDBS and components of DDBMS architecture. A DDBMS may be classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous. In a homogeneous system, all sites use the same DBMS product. It is much easier to design and manage. This approach provides incremental growth, making the addition of a new site to the DDBMS easy and allows increased performance by exploiting a parallel processing capability of multiple sites. In a heterogeneous system, sites may run different DBMS products, which need not be based on the same underlying data model. Heterogeneous systems usually result when individual sites have implemented their own database and integration is considered at a later stage. In heterogeneous systems, data may be required from another site that may have different hardware or different DBMS product or different hardware and different DBMS products. Let's take a look on multi-database system MDBS. It is a DDBMS in which each site maintains complete autonomy. It is logically integrate a number of independent DDBMSs while allowing the local DBMSs to maintain complete control of their operations. In simpler terms, it is a DBMS that resides transparently on top of existing database and file system and presents a single database to its user. It allows users to access and share data without requiring physical database integration. There are unfederated and federated MDBSs. Unfederated means there are no local users. A federated system is a cross between a distributed DBMS and a centralized DBMS. It is a distributed system for global users and a centralized system for local users. DDBMS is expected to have all the functions of DBMS with additional functions which are The first one, extended communication services to provide access to remote sites and allow the transfer of queries and data among the sites using a network Extended system catalog to store data distribution details Distributed query processing, including query optimization and remote data access. Extended security control to maintain appropriate authorization or access privileges to the distributed data. Extended concurrency control to maintain consistency of distributed and possibly replicated data. And extended recovery services to take account of failures of individual sites and the failures of communication links. Let's take a look on reference architecture for DDBMS. Due to diversity, no accepted architecture equivalent to ANSI Spark 3 level architecture. However, a reference architecture consists of set of global external schema, global conceptual schema GCS, fragmentation schema and allocation schema, and set of schemas for each local DBMS conforming to 3 level ANSI Spark architecture. Let's take a look on the reference architecture diagram on your screen. For global external schema, it is for end users who has the access to multiple sites of database to get the data in the system. For global conceptual schema, it is a logical description of the whole database as if it were not distributed. This level corresponds to the conceptual level of ANSI SPA architecture and contains definition of entities, relationships, constraints, security and integrity information. For fragmentation schema, it is a description of how the data is to be logically partitioned. It is a union of all local conceptual schemas in the system. For allocation schema, it is description of where the data is to be located. Each local DBMS has its own set of schemas. The local conceptual and local internet schemas correspond to the equivalent levels of the ANSI SPA architecture. The local mapping schemas maps fragments in the allocation schema into external objects in the local database. It is DBMS independent. 
and is the basis for supporting heterogeneous DBMSs. However, it is a little bit different for reference architecture for federated MDBS. We still have global external schema, which for global users that provide logical data independence. Next, we have global conceptual schema, GCS. It is a subset of all local conceptual schemas, LCS, consisting of data that each local system agrees to share. For example here, let's say in the first LCS, we have 100 data, 30 local and 70 global. And in the second local conceptual schema, LCS, we also have 100 data, 40 local and 60 global. Only the global data that the uh, internal system agrees to share will be inside the global conceptual schema, 70 plus 60, which is we have 130 data that can be used by the global users. Independent of the reference architecture, we can identify a component architecture for a DDBMS consisting of four major components. The first one is local DBMS, LDBMS component. This is to control the local data at each site that has a database. The second one is global system catalog. It holds information such as the fragmentation, replication and allocation schema. The third one is data communication component. It is a software to enable all sites to communicate with each other. And the last one is distributed DBMS component. So I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next part. Thank you.